Aaron O'Toole's hours as conservative leader could be numbered. His caucus is expected to decide his fate tomorrow. Sources tell us 35 MPs have signed a petition calling for a vote on O'Toole's leadership. That's a third of the caucus, clearing the 20% threshold needed to trigger a secret ballot. The vote is set for tomorrow at the National Caucus meeting, and if more than 50% of MPs, that's 60 or more, vote against him, O'Toole would have to step down. The caucus would then select an interim leader. The CBC's Hannah Thibodeau is on this story for us here in, in Ottawa. So, Hannah, what's the latest? Okay, so you gave us all those numbers there, David. What's happening today? You see both sides working those phones all day. We know that Aaron O'Toole and his team have been reaching out to caucus members, but not only caucus members, also other powerful conservatives outside of the inner circle here in Ottawa to try to get help to shore up the votes they need to have to keep him on as conservative leader. Now, on the other hand, the anti-O'Toole people are also making calls to caucus members. Remember, this is a vote that will be in secret. And what they're saying is that some people are telling them yes or no, but they really feel they have that number in order to get Aaron O'Toole out of that leadership position. Now, as you mentioned, they need 50% plus one. That's 60 of the caucus members. Um, and so how will this all work out tomorrow? We know it's going to happen tomorrow at the caucus meeting. We are told that it's now going to be a virtual caucus meeting. Uh, so what they will do is if it follows the same pattern as it did with the Sloan vote, the Derek Sloan vote, remember he was a mm -hmm. former conservative MP. He got into trouble with the caucus. They voted him out. So how it worked with him is... If it follows the same thing, the leader would get five minutes off the top to give a speech, to say what he has to say. Then any caucus member who wants to say something can stand up and have two minutes of time at the microphone. Then the leader gets an opportunity to respond to that. And then finally, they will do that vote and it will be a secret ballot. Now which way this is going to go. You know, if you listen to people on the Hill, you had some as they entered the Hill today. It's really all over the place. So let me play a couple more for you. I'm optimistic about the future of our party. Uh, I think we need uh, new, strong, principled leadership uh, that, uh, that will allow our caucus uh, to move together, united, going forward. Does he deserve to stay? Yes. Why? Why? So, why? Why not? So what do, you, what do you make of what's Just happening? Just because you've got a bunch of angry Shearites out there, that's the problem. I haven't spoken to enough of the guys to understand really what's going on or to understand, you know, who the 35 are, who are they not, who's supporting, who's not. So it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, so many sources behind the scenes, David, are telling us that it is you know, close to call, but also that Aaron O'Toole's time has been up for some time now. A lot of MPs, a lot of senators, well, we actually know of one senator who is out there, Senator Denise Batters, are frustrated with how Aaron O'Toole managed the election campaign. They felt he fumbled it. And then in last week's report, it was the post-election report, it didn't seem to blame him for any of the faults. What they feel is that he wasn't authentic, that he kind of flip-flopped on a lot of issues, like when it came to guns when it came to the carbon tax, and also right down to what type of conservative he actually is, pitching himself as a true blue conservative in the leadership race and then going into the election campaign and moving it more towards the middle. So they say they're unhappy with that, and it seems that, you know, tomorrow we are going to get some form of answer as to, as you say, will he stay or will he go? Right. And, you know, he wasn't in public today. He wasn't in question period today. What are we hearing from Aaron O'Toole on this? Yeah. So we are keeping a close eye on that. As you know, question period starts. The leader of the official opposition opposition gets a first question. He was not there. As I mentioned, he and his team were working the phones today. We did see him yesterday in the debate uh, on Ukraine. Uh, but late last night, he did put out this statement. Let me read a part of that statement, David. Uh, in that, he says, I am not going anywhere and I'm not turning back. Canada needs to be united and serious. I will accept the result of this vote. The signers of this letter must accept it too. They brought it they will have to live with it. So what these numbers are look, look like, we talked to both sides, the anti-O'Toole side feel they have enough numbers, the, the uh, O'Toole side also feels that they do. But one of the questions that, you know, we're asking out there, what if it's like, you know, they get two thirds and mm -hmm. would he step down, like looking back at other situations? And what we're hearing is that 
from this letter too, you get your 50% plus one or I'm staying on. And if that were to happen, oh, wow, this is mm. going to continue on for quite some time. So a lot to look uh, look ahead to tomorrow when it comes to the leadership of Aaron O'Toole. Okay, Hannah, thanks. And please come back if something happens. Will do. Before we're off the air. All right, that's CBC's Hannah Thibodeau in Ottawa. Okay, we want to hear more about what's happening inside the Conservative camp. Obviously, it's the big story of the day. Well, first, we've reached Alberta Conservative MP Michelle Rempel garner She's in Ottawa and plans to vote against removing Aaron O'Toole from the leadership. Michelle Rempel garner welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the people who have started this whole process. Who are the 35 MPs who have signed this letter demanding this vote on Mr. O'Toole's leadership? I actually don't know. Your colleague Ron Liepert says these dissenters are a bunch of Shearites, as people who might be loyal to Andrew Shear. Do you, do you think it's as simple as that? I don't want to call my colleagues' names. I work with them and, you know, they're, they're family members. I think what we need to do right now is uh, focus on being a united opposition. I, I mean, even people that would never consider voting conservative need to have an opposition that's holding the government to account right now, because there's a lot of problems in our country that need to be solved. And we can't do that if we're not coming together as a team. And, you know, I, I've worked with many people in my party uh, that, you know, I might not agree with everything on, on, and they might not agree with me, but we have managed to pull together to do some pretty spectacular things that I think benefit the country. And that's what I'd like to see, see happen tomorrow, is, is more of that. You say you don't know who they are, but we've seen Mr. Benzin, for example, go public on Twitter. Garnet Genuis has made his uh, in intentions known. So you you've seen that. I mean, why do you think they are doing this now? That's for them to explain, not for me. Um, I know that I've been taking calls from my community all day today, and they're you know the overwhelming uh, sentiment that I'm hearing is. We need you guys to hold the government to account. We need to fix a broken health care system. We need to figure out what the pandemic end game is. We need to deal with product shortages. I, I, I just think people of all political stripe are really tired of politics and they want to see members of parliament working for them. And I, my colleagues on all sides of this issue within my party are strong and have the capacity to do that. And I just think that a protracted leadership race that's triggered by caucus, there's already a process in place uh, for, for members to review the leader's performance after a federal election. Like, I, I just, I, I, I for, on behalf of my community, I need our team to pull together and, and to do that spectacular work. Um, and, and frankly, it benefits, it benefits all Canadians. So that is my appeal to everyone in my party. And I, I, I think that's going to be my message tomorrow, too. You're, you're a Calgary MP. Uh, Bob Benson is a Calgary MP in Calgary Heritage. And he says in his letter that Mr. O'Toole needs to go because he won the leadership campaigning as a right winger. And then he's rolled out a policy that is, has a de facto carbon tax in it. And he flip flopped on guns. Are you, you know, your, your writings are basically right next door. Are you hearing any of that from your constituents? Well, they're not next door, but um, <laughs> I, I will say this. Um, I know that there are many of my constituents who voted for us and gave us a mandate to hold the Liberals to account. That's what I'm working hard for them on. There's many issues in Alberta related to natural resources, workers' jobs. We need to be doing that in the House. I, 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 we have a process for members to deal with the internal politics of a leadership review that's already you know, being planned. That's what I'd like to see happen. I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I don't agree with everything. I don't, I've never agreed with everything any of my leaders that I've served under have done. I've always had differences with them. And, and sometimes, you know, I mean, viewers who have gotten to know me over the year, I've had pretty vigorous differences with them. But that doesn't mean that I, I, I want to see us go into another leadership review, particularly right now where there's a lot of things happening in this country that require calm, level heads, and work within within governance. And that includes my party. And again, I just, even as a grassroots activist, I came up through the party as a, as a grassroots activist. I'm one member of thousands across the country who have donated, who work hard to elect conservative MPs. They should have a say in this, right? Um, I voted against the Reform Act. 
Uh, when it was debated in the House many years ago, I voted against the provisions when we had the choice after this election, because I fundamentally believe that this should be driven by our party's membership and that our caucus's job is to focus on getting the job done. It doesn't mean that we have to ignore issues within caucus, but going to a leadership race every every time, like we've gone through so many leadership races. I know my team has a capacity to work together and get this done, I like holding Liberals to account, and I... I'd, I'd like to see that happen. That's what I'd like to see us focus on. So are, are you saying, are you backing Aaron, Aaron O'Toole because you think this is the wrong time for a leadership race? Or are you backing Aaron O'Toole because you think he's the right leader for the Conservative Party to go into the next election? Well, I do think that we need a Conservative Party that reflects the Canada of 2022. Mm -hmm. And I've been very, you know, I was very pleased to see Mr. O'Toole during the last federal election be unequivocal in his support for LGBTQ Canadians, as well as, you know, the rights of women. And those are two issues that are very important to me. And that's where he earned my respect. Are there things that, you know, if, if Aaron was on the show right now, he would tell you that him and I have locked horns many times. But that 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 process of disagreeing and coming up with things, uh, new ideas. It's not, that's, that's normal, right? What I, and I, but to carry on with that, the other side of your question, I do think that a leadership race right now that's triggered by caucus, that is not triggered by the members per our standing, you know, con the standing rules in our convention, I, I think it's a distraction at a time when all Canadians of all political stripes need a strong opposition to hold the government to account. You mentioned his support for LGBTQ issues, and I know you worked hard on the conversion therapy ban uh, to get it through Parliament and through the Senate. Mr. O'Toole's people, and sources close to him, are saying that a lot of this is because of the way that was pushed through and the way he supported it. Do you think some of this is revolt over the conversion therapy issue? What I saw in my, my caucus around that bill without going into, you know, the confidence of a meeting was a united caucus on how to approach this bill, um, even even across differences of opinion. Right. And that was actually that was actually one of the highlights of my parliamentary career. I don't want to speculate on the motives of my colleagues, but I would choose to think that our caucus is the caucus that is capable of achieving great things like the unity that we had on our approach to that bill in this parliament. I think that's what Canadians want to see in us. And um, again, this is this is my appeal to my colleagues on both sides of this issue, who many of whom I, you know, we've we've fought, we've laughed, we've you know, I think become family, and I, we need to unite. But to can, hold the government to can, account. if Mr. O'Toole wins tomorrow, because he only needs fifty percent plus one, so he needs sixty or more MPs to stick with him. I mean, can you really function? Can he really stay on if 35 MPs have already signed a letter? That's 30 percent of the caucus, right? I mean, that's pretty big. I, I mean, can you really all sit together and kind of put Humpty Dumpty back together again tomorrow? Well, we have to um, somehow um, because we have a role as individual members of parliament to serve our community. And uh, I don't want to speculate on what the outcome of the meeting is until it happens. I think that's a that's a disservice to my colleagues. But I will say this: um, right now, you know, arguably, our our country is facing some of the most serious challenges we've seen in over a generation. And like every minute that we are spending talking about these issues, uh, and you know, sort of the the internal sausage making, we are not holding the liberals to account. And that has to stop. Will, will Aaron O'Toole survive tomorrow, do you think? Will he win this vote? I hope so. I hope that um, my colleagues will understand that there is benefit to allowing our party membership to, to drive the bus on this per our constitution. And that, you know, and, and I also hope that all sides, you know, figure out how to come together because we, we have a job to do. Um, and that's, that's my appeal today. Okay. Michelle Rempel-Garner, thank you for your time. Take care.
Okay, so we requested MPs who have said they signed the letter or are calling for a caucus review. They either did not reply or are not available, but we do have a new open letter from Conservative MP Bob Benson from Calgary Heritage who writes, this is a letter to his caucus colleagues that Mr. O'Toole's public and private actions have threatened an unrepairable split in the party and accuses Mr. O'Toole of launching attacks and threatening consequences against any MP who dares dissent, saying that even if O'Toole wins the vote on Wednesday, the Conservative Party and its grassroots supporters across the country will lose, and he suspects that if Mr. O'Toole squeaks out of victory, he will attempt to re re remove me from caucus, saying, so be it. Well, Jamie Ellerton has worked on Conservative campaigns and caucuses for 18 years. He's now with Canaptis Strategic Communications in Toronto. Jamie, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. You think Aaron O'Toole needs to go. Why? I think if you just look at where the party has been since the election and what you've seen under uh, his leadership, I just do not see any kind of course correction or contrition as to how they're going to do something going forward. And Aaron O'Toole now, with a kind of five months after uh, the election in September, kind of continues to be just consumed by the media cycle on a week-to-week on -week basis. I think if you are going to say, give me a chance to do something again, uh, put some things in the window, talk about what you're going to change and how it's going to be different. Instead, I think he just gets getting keep drawn into polemic debates uh, and has been unable to kind of reframe any of those conversations in a way that kind of unites people behind his cause. Uh, and I think if you look at the actual situation within caucus now, it's just so untenable. I think that's uh, kind of the tip of the iceberg. When I've talked to conservatives across the country, even those who supported Aaron from the get-go on his leadership campaign to now, a lot of people are left scratching their head wondering what he's doing. And I just think it's to the point now where the party needs clarity going forward. And I think the uh, caucus uh, reform act uh, caucus maneuver tomorrow will bring the party the clarity it needs. You heard what Michelle Rempel Garner had to say, though, that it's time to focus on issues, not on infighting, and let the grassroots uh, settle this at, at the next convention. Does she have a point there? I, I think I, I'm from Ontario, David, where Patrick Brown resigned in disgrace as Ontario PC leader at the end of January. Uh, Doug Ford won the leadership race at the end of March and was premier by June. And so I, I think in terms of it's not the time for a race, I think if you look at where the party is and the obvious divisions that exist, uh, there needs to be, I think, a more open conversation. There needs to be a reconciliation uh, from between the various factions as to what that is. And I think that's an opportunity for a leader to actually come forward and reframe that debate to unite conservatives going forward, to continue to kind of hug the process and technicalities of uh, things like the party constitution for a convention that's going to be over a year away uh, and, 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 and to kind of live in this weird state of purgatory, uh, I think actually weakens the party's chances of the next election. And I think that's why I personally welcome what the caucus is as initiated in terms of getting clarity on this going forward. And if Aaron O'Toole does win with a 50% plus one and decides to stay on as leader, I think it's incumbent upon him to truly start to more effectively lay out a vision uh, as to what he wants to do, as opposed to just kind of screaming at Justin Trudeau one day and flip-flopping on position, other positions the next. But can he realistically uh, stay in this role with already 35 publicly saying he needs to go? That's 30% of the caucus. And, uh, you know, you assume there are some more who haven't publicly declared or haven't signed the letter who might agree with them. That already puts him in a very weakened position. We saw Joe Clark go a long time ago, but, uh, you know, needing two-thirds. It, it's going to be tough for Mr. O'Toole to get there because he's already got a ceiling of 70%. Yeah, I think that, frankly, the position is untenable, which is why I think even if you hear some of the way people are starting trying to frame this as a SOCON versus the rest of the party kind of debate, I frankly just don't think that actually applies. Uh, I think a lot of people on your show who have seen me comment over the years would uh, pretty much quickly agree that I am no staunch SOCON. But I think when you look at the state of the party and what Aaron O'Toole has or even more accurately hasn't done, since the election, I think it is so much at stake for the country as to what we're trying to do going forward. And I think he's kind of created the situation himself. Even I've heard uh, reports today that he's kind of having people calling around and kind of having still taking like the stick approach is like there'll be consequences if you don't support me. I'm going to win this and trying to call people's bluff. And I just think I, the, to me, those aren't the actions of a leader who has a vision and is clearly in control. What about the binary choice that Mr. O'Toole has sort of put on the table here, saying that the party has a choice between two roads, one that he calls angry, negative and extreme, and the other that he calls a more modern direction, which is the sort of party that you have advocated for in the past. Is the party really facing that kind of choice right now? I think that's very much going to be part of the party conversation going forward, David. But I would also say who's going to step forward to enter this leadership race and what that looks like is very much 
up for debate. When we were having public conversations with the party in January of 2020, we thought that that leadership race was going to be a race between Pierre Polya, Verona Ambrose, maybe uh, Jean Charest, maybe Peter McKay, and uh, who ultimately ended up running wasn't part of that conversation. And the race played itself out. I actually have uh, confidence in the democratic process and in the ability to persuade people to one's position and win and grow support to be able to do that. And so I don't think we can prejudge a leadership race uh, before it's, it's actually began. But I think if you look at the general culture uh, that exists within our political climate, it is undeniable that things are incredibly polarized. Everyone talks past each other. Everyone's an all-star in their own social media feed and kind of ignores everyone else. I think a leadership candidate that steps forward that can be, stay true to conservative principles while uniting and growing our voters here and applying those to the challenges Canada faces today will be well positioned to win that, whether they're in caucus or with, uh, currently outside of it. So we know he's down 35 votes going into this tomorrow based on the number that have signed the letter. I mean, do you think Aaron O'Toole survives this tomorrow? Can he survive it? Uh, on a technicality, sure he can in the same way like a team 10 games back with 12 games to play can um, clinch that last playoff spot. But I think we all know that it's very unlikely to happen. Do you think the party could split over this? I do think there's a, a, some risk of that. I think if you look at how some of the actors, especially who are more vocal in driving particular issues and causes talk about it, it does sometimes seem like some of these issues are irreconcilable. But that's where I think there's actually a test of leadership to look at how you can bring uh, conservatives together and bring new other Canadians who aren't currently in the party into the party and represent the faces of modern Canada as it exists today. Okay, Jamie Ellerton, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks, David. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.